I love My Hero Academia. You probably know this if you've been around my channel at all, or know me at all, or follow me on Twitter at all, or have ever experienced any event with me. I don't know. So with season three ending, I figured I should make some sort of video about it. Well, I wasn't quite sure how to approach this video. There are a lot of small ideas that are really interesting, but I don't feel like they would make a whole video. Or I first thought about doing a review, breaking down each arc, what I liked, what I didn't. Well, I could do this and kind of already wrote that. I feel like doing it that way would make it so that the larger points I want to make are sort of buried in all that detail. So I've decided to do a sort of high level overview highlight of what I feel makes My Hero Academia so special, at least for me. This video will contain spoilers and focus on season three primarily. So yeah, if you have found this video, are interested in it and care about spoilers, I'm really surprised you haven't watched My Hero Academia yet, but you really, really should because it's awesome and just go, go watch it. There won't be any uh, spoilers for what has not been dubbed yet. So yeah, there are a couple episodes there that I have not seen the final one and the one before that doesn't have anything really worth talking about. So if you're just caught up with the dub, you're good to watch this. Anyway, one of the big things that the show does right is how it weaves the various characters and subplots together in a way that just feels natural. I've recently been watching the YouTube channel The Wisecracks, where they break down various media. Cool channel, go check it out. And one of their videos made a really interesting point that I think also applies to My Hero Academia, and that is their video on South Park Season 20. They talk about one of the pillars of South Park storytelling is that the story beats must have a clear cause and effect between them, not just a random series of events. Or as the Wisecracks put it, you can put it therefore or but between the beats of the story as opposed to the phrase and then. One example from My Hero Academia is how Kirishima was the key to Deku's plan to rescue Bakugo and everything that had to happen to build up to this moment. First, Kirishima is a character that admires manliness and looks up to those who are brave and determined. Therefore, he quickly grows to respect Bakugo, they are forced to get close to him. Because of this, they end up becoming friends, or at least as close as you get with friendship and Bakugo. In addition, because of Kirishima's mindset of approaching problems head on, he failed the final exam. Therefore, he was forced to be part of remedial lessons during the forest training arc. Therefore, he wasn't able to fight when the villains attacked, and since he wasn't able to fight, he felt guilty, and therefore would do whatever it took to get Bakugo back. Therefore, he went with Deku. All of these story beats are able to lead to the rescue scene just being so awesome. Like, it would not have worked so well if Deku just held out his hand and Bakugo took it, but it being Kirishima really just fits so much better. Another example of this type of storytelling in here is something Deku pointed out with everything that led to All Might needing to fight All for One, which is probably the biggest event of the season with its whole impact on the story. Or just the ripple effect of Stain. Despite Stain's arc being relatively short, those few episodes had a dramatic effect on the story and the characters. Through both heroes and villains, you see the impact that Stain is having on the world. Or Bakugo, just his entire character arc spanning from episode 1 to episode 61, I think it was. All of this is building him up. His successes, his failures, his relationship with Deku, all that. This all building up and, well, I'm sure it will continue in season 4 as well. The way that My Hero Academia does this, with the character arcs being woven throughout the story arcs, as opposed to them just getting one arc, which is theirs to shine, they do some cool things, they resolve their story, and then they become background characters, well, that's not what we get here. We really see this with Todoroki, where his struggles with Endeavor are brought back to cause him to fail the license exam, and again with Bakugo. Another thing I really like about the show is how it handles the media. The media are vicious here, going after UA anytime anything goes wrong, especially after Bakugo is captured. They are out for blood, trying to make villains out of UA, and this is realistic too. Look at any media story, and they're probably trying to frame someone as a villain and just show conflict. If it isn't Fox News, Trump is a villain. If it is Fox News, then the Democratic Party is a villain, and I'm sure you have something analogous in other countries as well. Just to test this. 
when I was writing the script, I turned on Fox News for a brief second. Saw it was about Trump in Missouri trying to campaign for some person running for office. And then CNN had the campaign between Ted Cruz and the Democrat whose name I cannot pronounce. And it's just all about the conflict between these two. There is also this whole drawing off fear thing. Like you can see that all throughout the media where they're trying to frame this coming problem, yes, as a great catastrophe and terrible. And it's like, I see that so often, I'm like, None of this is something worth worrying about, because most of it isn't, so that just naturally makes me dismiss all of it. And this contrasts so well with the heroes here trying to do their best for the world, but then hounded by the media whenever anything goes wrong. And the villains notice this. They even use the media as a tool. When they go after Bakugo, their goal is not to beat the heroes in a fight, but to weaken the hero's place in society, and they ended up using the media to do so. Well, this is most evident during season three, this is another thing that was built up all along. Back in episode one, remember how All Might talked about how he stood for justice, not sound bites? Now that we got to into season three, I understand why even more so than before. Another thing I love about the show is how optimistic it is. Despite acknowledging there are problems with the world all throughout the show, it is seen that the heroes can overcome these problems. One of the times this really stood out to me was during the Battle Royale part of the Provisional License Exam. The heroes never considered the idea of betraying a classmate to get a point. If this was a more cynical anime, it's something that someone would have thought of and tried. But instead, the characters are all such heroes that they wouldn't even consider betraying a classmate like this. And this optimism is something I really appreciate seeing from My Hero Academia, paired to all the cynical shows and media coming out. Especially when it comes to, like, Western animation. The reason I like anime so much compared to Western media is because of this optimism. It feels like all the non-kid cartoons from the West are all about cynicism, how ideals are stupid and you shouldn't hold to them because of how messed up the world is. And anime has these types of shows too. One of the biggest contrasts this year to My Hero Academia is Devilman Crybaby. And I find that show interesting because of how it takes the shonen tropes, but goes in the opposite direction. It shows an optimistic, caring main character who wants to help everyone like Deku, but whose ideals are ultimately shown to be powerless. And while I do respect Devilman for being more tragic, I wasn't able to resonate with it. I didn't feel anything with that tragic part. But with My Hero Academia, I'm constantly drawn into the story of hope, of inspiration. It's like when I talked about why I love shonen anime so much last year. It's like, these are the stories that I want to be real. That's why I watch them. And then that brings me back to the idea of what it means to be a hero, and even villain. Throughout the first two seasons, we saw how being a hero meant having courage, being determined, having strength. And while these are all as true as ever, another element was added, and that was having the, a heroic personality. Throughout the season, we see how a hero doesn't just save people in a physical sense, but they save people's hearts. They give people hope. The licensing exam highlights this, with the students graded not on just physically helping people, but how they inspire the victims. And we see this wonderfully after the battle between Deku and Bakugo, how All Might talks about how a hero needs to be both like Deku and Bakugo, having Deku's heart to help people, and Bakugo's strength and determination to never lose. And when you combine those two things together, you get a hero like All Might. But another interesting aspect of the show is what it means to be a villain. I noticed a line from Sue, which I think speaks to this in a very interesting way. It doesn't matter how noble your intentions. If you go out there trying to find the bad guys, knowing you're breaking the rules, then you're acting like villains, not heroes. The rules exist for the good of all. So heroes are the ones who stick to these rules. Sometimes the rules are wrong. Looking back to another well-known shonen, The answer that Naruto gives is that there are things more important than following the rules. So what does that mean for Hiro Aka here? Looking back to Stain, he was someone who broke the rules, but for noble intentions. Seeing that the world and its rules were messed up, which I'd say they are to a degree. So he was trying to make the world a better place. Obviously he is a villain by that definition, but is what he did wrong? Well, I would argue yes, it's not a clear black or white answer. So what will Shigaraki do as he grows as a villain? 
Will he be like Stain, find a noble cause to fight for? How will this parallel Deku's journey? I'm really curious to see, but please don't post manga spoilers in the comments. I want to watch it for myself in season four, which I hope is going to be announced before this video comes out. Another interesting thing about villains here is how we start to see why characters become villains. How they're sort of looking for a way to be accepted that they can't get from society as a whole. And you could say this is a way that society has failed them. There are no heroes who will take them in, accept them, for whatever reason. I mean, that happened with Shigaraki and All for One. I just love that twist, and that's another thing I might get into more later. And lastly, one of the things I want to talk about briefly is the battles, and how there are oftentimes so many dimensions to them. It is rarely just, can one character beat up the other one? It is all about the clash of ideals, of themes, the characters going after things that aren't simply winning a fight, but somehow advancing their cause, such as the villains going after Bakugo. They didn't really care if some of them were defeated along the way, and how going after Bakugo was all about going after the institution of heroes itself. Or again, the fight between Deku and Bakugo, the clash of ideals and all that. And I also liked how there was an impact from the fight. For example, Deku did de defeat Muscular, but he basically destroyed his arm for the process, unable to fight and unable to keep them from taking Bakugo. So did Deku win that fight because he beat up Muscular? Or did he lose because he was unable to accomplish his goal of saving Bakugo? Some interesting things to think about, or at least I think so. And well, that's my overview thoughts of season three that would not take me like two hours to get into. I could say more, and if you want more, let me know, and I will make a more detailed breakdown of Season 3. But I think that's enough for now. Plus, I have that whole 12-part series, so if you want me to hear me talk about My Hair Academia more, go ahead. That should keep you busy for a while. And I still don't know why I thought that was a good idea, but I'm glad I did it, if that makes sense. Whatever. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time.